Die Hard slaps hard, an all-time great heist film bursting to the brim with great characters. But which characters have the best energy? Which characters are the hardest slappers? Which characters come into a scene and instantly make it better? Because to me, these are the best characters, the ones you can root for, the ones you connect with, and these are the characters that will be filling out our top five spots. So, no need to dress this set anymore. Let's dive straight into the list. The number five spot on this list goes to Old Mate Waltz, who is unceremoniously called City Worker by the film, even though he says his own name. Uh, yeah, this is Walt. But what do we know about Walt? Well, not a lot, really. He's in a hole, and he can turn off the power to Nakatomi Plaza while being in the hole. Fox, that's not, you don't understand. You can't do it from here. Yeah, you could. It, it can't be done from here. I could just, I got the rate. You can't do it from down here, I'm telling you. It's gotta be done from downtown. What makes Walt such a good character is that he doesn't seem to give a shit about the heist that is going on. He also doesn't really give a shit about the bureaucracy of calling up Town Hall and going through the whole procedure of proper paperwork and then blah, 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 the power turns off eventually. No. All Walt knows is that even from the hole, he can turn the power up. What I love so much about this character is that he has the exact same vibe as a child listening to their parents fight about whether they should get to do something or not. And Walt's just sitting there holding his skateboard wanting to talk about a sick kickflip video he saw. Walt doesn't care if you should turn the power off or if it's the right thing to do. He just wants to get out the truth. It can be done and he can do it from this hole. I mean, Look at this face while they're arguing. This face screams, why aren't they listening to me? I said I can do the thing. Also, the energy he has when he asks Sandro to shut down the grid is the exact energy you have when you're asking a friend to do a favor that you know they do not want to do. Yeah, Central? Yeah? Uh, yeah, this is Walt uh, down at Nakatomi. Uh, say, listen, uh, would it be possible for you to turn off uh, grid 212? In my opinion, Walt is one of the most relatable characters in the film, and all around a good time. The best heist films need to have an awesome heist leader, and Die Hard certainly does. The leader of Hans and the Gruber 11, Hans Gruber himself, is everything you want. He's personable, getting on with everyone around him, even those he's stealing from. Nice suit. John Phillips, London. He knows how to throw out a sneaky quip. I could talk about industrialization and men's fashions all day, but I'm afraid work must intrude. And most importantly, he's a total pro who demonstrates his ability time and time again. A total package. Let's look over just a few of the good things he does. He's calm and reassures the hostages in the tower that they're not in danger, even allowing a pregnant woman to lie on a sofa, as Hans cares about people. And he isn't here for aimless murdering, he's just here for the fattiest of bombatiest of stacks. But I'll have a sofa brought out to you. Good enough? Good enough. And unless you like it messy, I'd start bringing us in groups to the bathroom. Yes, you're right. It will be done. Hans also displays constant high-level thinking throughout the film. So when he says later in the film, I am an exceptional thief. We all know what he is saying is true. The creme de la creme of such decision making is the fact that he has a backup plan to get past the last and impossible to break lock on the safe. The electromagnetic seal. You do understand the circuits cannot be cut locally. Trust me. This method is using the FBI's predictability against them. He's done the research and he knows what they're going to do. Ask the FBI. They got the universal terrorist playbook and they're running it step by step. Hans knows that one of the protocols is cutting the power and is aware that cutting the power will open the lock. The characters in the film even refer to this as a miracle and that's just Hans Gruber. He can pull off miracles. Like part of this dude's plan is legitimately causing enough ruckus that they bring in the FBI then having these representatives of the United States government unlock the safe for them. The only people with enough power to get it done so quickly. That's fucking sick. All of this is great heist leader stuff and makes Hans excellent. But Hans has that little extra something that no one else does. Bill Clay. When Hans pretends to be an American who's escaped, we see him transform into a new person. This means that Hans Gruber has the acting ability of Alan Rickman, which is amazing. So on top of everything else Hans can do, he's also a class actor. Legend shit. I could keep naming all the cool things that Hans Gruber does, but I'd be here forever. So instead, I'll acknowledge why he isn't even higher on this list. And the reason is because he does kill quite a few people. And overall, that really hurts his rankings on this list. The two people he kills directly, I think are kind of excusable. The first literally tells Hans to kill him. I'm telling you, you're just gonna have to kill me. 
Okay. Actually choosing to die rather than having his corporation lose money, like a fucking simp. Next, Ellis, who sucks. Now he doesn't outright deserve to die, but he does make a deal which is if Roy doesn't bring back the detonators, then he dies. A deal which isn't gonna happen. They want the detonators or they're gonna kill me. So he basically self-elects to create a deal. Hope I'm not interrupting. What does he want? It's not what I want, it's what I can give you. Which ends in his death, and then he dies. So, pretty much his fault. However, these two security guards are killed at the start of the heist, which isn't Hans, but surely is at his instruction, so he takes blame. He also blows up the top of the building at the end and looks like he intends to kill people, and it's possible that part of the original plan is to have all the hostages die, or at least some of them, Maybe it's none of them, but it's unclear. Either way, he de facto kills at least two innocent people, the security guards, and that's really lame. So he can't be any higher than he is because murder is lame source. Zooming into number three, we have Argyle. Argyle brings an energy to the film that instantly lifts it out of the stale and muggy air we've been living in during the airplane and airport scene and instantly throws the film into a higher gear. Argyle is an endearing character. It's his first day as a limo driver and he's nervous and unsure what to do. But he's not fronting, he's just being himself. Okay, Argyle, what do we do now? I was uh, hoping you could tell me. It's my first time driving a limo. Argyle continues to be himself throughout the film, and during the car ride section with Roy, he asks intimate and probing questions that help open up the ever closed off man he is driving. So why didn't you come? Well, why didn't you come with him, man? What's up? When he finally drops off Roy at the party, he offers to wait around to find out if he's staying with his wife or needs a hotel. Sure, he does this in search of a tip, but there's a sincerity, there's a genuineness here. He's staying around because it's clear he cares. It's not just about the job. The same traits we've seen him when he's asking Roy about his marriage in the car. I tell you what, I'm gonna pull in the parking garage and I'll wait. You score, you give me a call on the car phone. I'll take your bags to the desk. You strike out, I'll get you a hotel. You're all right, Argyle. This is Argyle's main portion of the film, but occasionally the movie will cut back to him and every time it does, it is great. One time he's vibing with a bear in the back seat of his car. Another time we cut to him to just see him laugh and it improves the scene a ton. Argyle also stops the heist at the end of the film by driving his limo at the getaway car. Then he runs at the man who he knows is a terrorist and can only assume has a gun just to deck him and knock him out. A good character arc. His only drawback is this completely unchilled domestic violence joke. Hey, come on, you divorced? You separated? <laughs> she beat you up? <laughs> but overall, a good character. In our penultimate spot, we have Thurnberg's assistant. Who I will refer to as good journalist. Apart from this scene where she appears very quickly, this is her only scene in the film. Bam. On being that too. You got something. Tell me you got something. Just McLean's name, badge number, employment record, vital statistics, and his family's home address. Right here in LA. Also, as that's the only clip of her, I'm just going to play clips of the other news people in the film. Okay, so what do we know about this character? She gets shit done, and in the film Die Hard, that is a premium, because this film is littered with people not getting shit done. Oh, let me quickly try to impress people by negotiating with Hans Gruber. Well, now you're dead. Hey, go kill Roy. Look, you're even holding a gun to his head. Oh shit, somehow you fucked that up and now you're dead. Let's also kill Roy, even though we're on the same side. Whiff, 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 whiff. Let's just try to fly a helicopter. Oops, now we're dead. Even simple shit, like basic geography. As in Helsinki, Sweden. Finland. Is apparently too fucking hard for diehard characters. So the fact that this journalist comes into the film and just crushes her job is amazing. Even the characters in the scene recognize how amazing it is. This Thurnberg fucko is all sad and desperate. Then she tells him this single sentence and he basically creams himself. She's also got a charm about her. She's just done some top level research, but is she coming all braggadocious and arrogant? No, she's playing it cool. But she's not undermining herself either. Check out that self-satisfied smirk. She's killed it and she knows it, but she doesn't need to be a tool about it. So let's clock what she did that is so good. She lists five pieces of information that she's found in a ridiculously short amount of time. First, the name. All right, pretty strong start. Maybe she asked one of the cops or something. Either way, networking. Badge number is next. 
That means she had to make a call to some sort of New York police bureau at night on Christmas Eve. Tough ask. Following this up is employment record. That's not a LinkedIn search, that is straight up research. Maybe someone in the police department gave it to her, or maybe she just got it from somewhere else. But that is not public record, so altogether, some high quality research. Next up we have vital statistics, which is things like birth dates, marriages, migration records, stuff like that. But this is all civil records, an entirely different type of research. And I don't know a lot about government branches, but I know for a fact they're not open at night, especially not on Christmas Eve. So I legitimately have no idea where she managed to get these records from. But she's a wizard, so I'm not surprised she managed to pull it off. Lastly, address. At first I thought, it's the old time, so yellow pages, which lists everyone's address and phone number. But Roy doesn't even live in LA, and I know America doesn't have a national directory, so I guess she got this information through a phone call? But who's she calling that is giving her the address of not this dude, but his wife and kid's separate home address? Who knows? But she can get it done. This is an incredible amount of information to get at night on New Year's Eve pre-internet. Or while her racist as shit boss is moping around in a fucking van. Legend shit, great character, deserved of our number two spot. The number one unequivocal best character in all of Die Hard is my man Theo. This is how this dude enters the film. So Kareem rebounds, right? Feeds Worthy on the break, over to AC, to Magic, then back to Worthy, right? Boom! Two points. We're in. Let's run that back. This dude spins into the film, wearing his dapper college professor drip, absolutely and understandably hype about the Showtime Lakers, then uses a guy getting murdered to punctuate his retelling of this basketball game, making a clean pun in the process. Has he timed his story perfectly, knowing exactly when they're going to enter the building and exactly when this dude is going to die? Or has he just seen the opportunity and taken it? I think it's the former because of the way he waits for the shot to come in. He knows it's coming, and that is top tier storytelling. He follows that up by doing sick parkour over the desk into two foot kicking a corpse in the chest, which he doesn't need to do at all. He could easily walk around or simply stay on the other side of the desk. But nah, not Theo though, he's straight styling. After kicking the dude, he then crouches over the guy, just to stunt, and says, I'm in. Fuck yes, I am in. This is straight hero entrance shit. That is how you roll into a fucking film. From here on out, I am completely Team Theo. And he keeps this energy for the entire film. So what's Theo's role on the team? Theo is the tech guy, one of my consistent favorite positions on any high squad. And apart from Hans, by far the most important member. Possibly even more important than Hans for this heist. But Theo is a class above. He is charming, funny, confident, and he knows exactly what he is doing. Mere seconds after this ice cold entrance, he gets straight to work and all while humming to himself, manages to lock down the building and set up the rest of the team for success. Sure, he sort of fails at getting the materials at the end when he's stopped by Argyle, but everyone is dead, so he's probably just filling their role. Also, the fact that him and his barely on-screen ever assistant are the only two left alive proves his status as the main member of the team. Theo is irreverent and sarcastic and elevates every single scene he is in. This is best exemplified during the police siege scene. When the cops try and break into the building, Theo, being tasked with watching the cameras and guiding the rest of the team on how to act... They'll be coming. Everyone get ready. Theo, you are the eyes now. ...is a hugely important member here. Yep, is he scared or concerned? Hell no, Theo doesn't give a fuck. <clears throat> All right, listen up guys. <sighs> it was the night before Christmas and all through the house, not a creature was stirring except the four assholes coming in the rear in standard two by two cover formation. Every scene he's in, he's slinging zings like it's his day job. Every line is a snazzy quip or showing his expertise. Usually both. Whoa, wait a minute, wait a minute, what have we here, gentlemen? The police have themselves an RV. Southeast corner. Oh my god, the quarterback is toast! Amazing 10 out of 10 character, and by far, the best character in all of Die Hard. That's it, that's the video, those are the top characters in Die Hard. 
If you have a different opinion, make sure you tell me in the comment section below. I am genuinely curious and thank you so much for watching. If you did enjoy the video, like and subscribe and I will be continuing this series soon enough as well as more regular gaming content coming to the channel soon. But for now, bye.